<laughs> you see my uh, my grease fire recording session last night? No. You didn't? No. I'll send it to you. Yeah, I want to see it. Yeah. Aaron from the show. We're, we're taping our first episode on Friday. Looking for sponsors, yep. by the way. It's a cooking show with Mel, Dark Side of the Grill, and then Aaron, who runs Meat in town. Guess what they serve at Meat? Meat. Yeah, that's it. Yes, yeah. That's all they serve. Yeah, it's awesome. It's the name such of the restaurant. Good... The restaurant's called Meat. Meat. Just and one it... name. Meat. Oh, fuck, I would go to that restaurant. It's like, packed, and Is it's it really? like brisket and oh. ribs and oh. oh. Cured meats, so do they good. Meats, or do they have cured meats. Big cured. They got meats like a guy. whole smoking thing in the back. That like, do they really? Yeah, Aaron's. He's an unbelievable chef. He was on a cooking show and came second. And so it's Aaron, it's Mel, and it's me. And I like, <clears throat> like I burn eggs. So yeah. it's going to be an interesting uh, dynamic. Um. So we. Uh, this is of course. Let me just let me hang on. Let me set the table a little bit. That's Lachlan Cross. He's talking about a new television show that he's working on—a barbecue television show where you get a couple of different people together, including Mel Schmiller, world famous barbecue dude, uh, who's got his own brand, Dark Side of the Grill, and his buddy Aaron, who owns Meat, and they're coming up and cooking a uh, with a barbecue show, teaching. Uh, and, and listen, I love you, but uh, teaching someone who has no clue what they're doing yeah. behind a grill how to grill. Yeah. Uh, and everybody's going to be drinking at the same time. So the content's yeah. going to be amazing. It's going to be love on the spectrum only if there's meat, no autistic people, and everyone's drunk. Well, <laughs> that's that's the difference. I'm excited. Let's not for take it. autistic off the table just yet. You are pretty OCD. Yeah, yeah. We'll get we'll get uh, to meet those guys on on uh, on uh, Friday because yeah, they're going to be on the podcast. Mel. I love Mel. Mel's, I've never Mel's done character. a podcast with a guy like like you know. Everybody has a couple of drinks in a podcast. That's right. that We've had really him drink. on. Yeah, I'm going. I'm getting to it. I'm, We've I'm, had him on. I'm, ta- I'm, re- I'm recounting the story. Actually. That's right. So okay, just yeah. let me get through it. You go. Thank you. I'm looking so, something up. I, okay, yeah. You go ahead and do other work while we're doing this podcast. That's fine. So uh, when he was on the show, and I remember you're like, "Hey, he's going to have a couple cocktails. Going to talk to us about barbecue." And I'm great. He had 22 mics hard lemonade in an hour and a half long podcast. I was like. I fucking love this guy. And he was like the most cogent guest we've had after his 21st. Right. I'm like, I don't, I, I don't know how he does it. Don't care. I just want to be around him. That's Aaron it. called me and said, him. should we be worried about, um, about Mel's drinking? And I'm like, no, cause I've never seen anybody drink like him. No, me neither. Like, and, yeah. and you know and what? I've never seen anybody it wasn't like Mike's hard. It was uh white claws. <laughs> oh yeah. White it's a white clock. <laughs> I don't know why yeah, that makes the teenage funny. spritzer. This giant barbecue guy crushing like teenage spritzers. He was telling strawberry. me about going to the doctor, and I I stopped him. I went, "You you don't tell your doctor how much you drink." And he goes, "Oh no 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 no." I'm like, it would be a, <laughs> like he doesn't be know. a good day. <laughs> anyway, I want to go to that restaurant. Meat. I'm excited to talk to your guys on Friday too. But there's a restaurant like that in town too, called Antler, uh, here in Toronto, where Caused a major problem because all the vegans came out and they're like, I remember yeah, that. You remember that? And this guy like carved up like a baby deer in the window. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that video was, I love that guy. Yeah, dude, it happened again yesterday. Uh, and before we get to some stuff, we got a lot of things to get to today. Bridge collapses, P. Diddy. We got a ton of details about that. Cocaine Bear 2, a uh, new movie coming out. Uh, but but I want to, I, I want to pay uh, special attention. It takes a really tough dude, like, and I mean mentally and emotionally tough. To go to a vegan rally and eat ribs. To my I'd point. I'd do it. I, well, what are they going to so do? Vegans, they have no energy. They're no, not well, getting enough protein. Their brains don't work properly. They're not going to exactly. be able to fight you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No protein, no energy. They'll be out after the first swing. Uh, to my point, I want you to watch this video. And we're going to ch- chat a little bit about it. And, and listen, I don't have a problem with being vegan. I hate taking people's inventory and watching these people get mad at this guy who's eating a rib at a vegan protest. Was he trying to be an asshole? For sure. Yes. But it's meat. We've been doing it for a long time. I cannot stand it when someone else says, 
I live like this and I'm going to be a warrior until everybody lives like this. No one it's wants not, it's to not live that. like that. It's it is not like, vegan. no, it isn't. To me, it's don't tell me how to live my life. Correct. If I make a choice to eat meat every day, if yeah. something's bleeding on my plate every time I every time I fill my face hole, that's me. Yeah. Right? That's a choice that I've made. Yeah. Perfect. If you choose to eat rabbit poop and that's your life, like then you eat rabbit poop. If, you if that's you eat falafel and call that meat, good for you. I don't give a fuck what you put do in. Do that. Baseball. Yeah, exactly. I'm saying do that. Yeah. It's always been for me. It's like, do not knock on my door and tell me how to live my life. And unfortunately, this is the problem. Anybody Can we play that, the video before you have an issue with it? Anybody that has ever been vegan around me, yeah, for whatever length of time it was, yeah, has always told me that I am doing damage to the planet. I'm killing myself. I'm going to die of 15 different cancers. Yeah. Like there's always that judgment piece that drives me crazy. Oh, totally. You want to see it in action and get triggered by it? Let's watch this guy try and eat a rib at a vegan protest. It's awesome. Well, <laughs> you're not going to do nothing. You're going to die on your own. Without your own. You're going to, she's like, guy's eating a rib. He's like, you're going to die on your own. You're not going to do it. It's because he's eating meat. It's because he's having lunch. She's like, you're going to die. Paul, if you come, you and your small dick and your way of killing animals, and it feels good in front of the vegan You have all the blood on your face. You have all the blood on your hands. It feels good with your small dick. I can guarantee you. Just licking a kebab. He's just sitting there licking it going, yeah, that's fine. I don't care what you say. I'm just going to enjoy this kebab. What's Jesus Will Smith's me. kid's name? That annoying uh, one. Jaden, that little fucker. Jaden, did you hear what he did? I yeah, went off he went on this. He bought, a home, he bought a vegan food truck and went to feed the homeless, and the homeless people were like, the fuck's this? That's right there. <laughs> like, did you see the homeless guy in L.A. eating a severed human leg on the street the other day? That can't be real. It's a hundred percent real. Guy got no. arrested yesterday. It's on TMZ. It's I swear to God, it's real. No. I sourced it yesterday. This homeless guy's just walking around chewing on a leg. There's a guy who's not afraid of meat of any variety. Well, apparently, human flesh tastes a lot like pork. pork. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently, the pork nickname duck. for the cannibalized nickname for um, humans back in the day was long pig. Oh, was it really? I didn't. We know were that. known as as long pork. Oh, <laughs> that's a thing. Look at the long pork. I didn't know that. Were we really? Because well, human, cause, cause human pork, flesh tastes up. like pork. <laughs> this guy had a lot of long. Okay, pork well, you're head. Googling. Yeah, there you go. Look at this. It's on Cora. Um, I, so I read that Peterson one got to start. Long pork is another name for human meat. Those will be eating human flesh. Say it tastes very similar to pork, but a little sweeter. The name comes from island cannibal tribes. You used to describe the meat they were eating for missionaries. They killed. <laughs> Why am I laughing? Why do I find that absolutely hysterical and awesome? Okay, this is going to be a, this is gonna be a, a tough pivot, but I want to get it in before we forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is the Dean Blundell um, uh, store. Fun merch yeah. store and we got a couple of go. new items up do yeah. people do people understand what this is let's they go get, jeff do they get this because this mm -hmm. is really funny so what a lot of people don't understand about uh politics is that it's dumb and it's ridiculous and most yes. of the people in it are fucking morons case in point pierre polyev now pierre polyev's real name apparently according to high school yearbooks and other records is jeff because you know what? Yeah, and it's not takes, J. You know what? We should almost it's change not it. G E O F F. Come on. That, no, it's he, not. It's he is totally a G E O. No. He is a total G E O F F. Oh, 100%. He's a gee off if I've ever seen a gee off. He's not a Jeff, but his real name's Jeff. Unexplained reason. No one can figure out why he changed his name. He's running to be prime minister. He's way ahead in the polls. Pierre Polyev sounds. Minister. Guy's got more a fucking. Like a, he's got like a. He's got like a. He's got a, like a like a witness relocation name for Christ's sake. So anyway, down in the United States, everybody was saying, "Let's, let's go, Brandon." Go Brandon, as a pejorative 
to people who hated um, Joe Biden, which was really slang. Has for something to fuck do Joe Biden with a and, NASCAR? Yeah, I guess so. I, who knows? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I, I, I what matters is the shirts here Jenner. exist on the merch store. And you can go to the Dean Blundell store I, and you I, can get your Let's Go Jeff t-shirt and you can wear it proudly it. because you know his secret. Everybody calls him Jeff on social media now. Uh, not only can you get one of those shirts, if I've blocked you, by the way, 13,000 of you, congratulations. Uh, we've got this really cool shirt called Dean Blocked You T, uh, where we've got a screenshot of someone that I've blocked in my travels along Twitter. Like I said, the number's hearty. Uh, because I just don't G A F. Okay, and uh, you can. I want to read bucks. an exchange I have with somebody that you have blocked. Okay. So on the weekend on Sunday, Dean goes and promotes his uh, blocked shirt. Yes. Right. Puts a tweet out, and I see it, and I go, "Okay." I'm not sure if Dean realizes the irony of promoting a new shirt to his demographic that can't see that post. Well, didn't I say in the actual tweet? Looks like I'm going to have to unblock so I'm changing about 13, things on the fly 000, here to make it more entertaining. So 13,000 people just to sell one shirt. You're you're yeah. becoming a blocker on the show now. I love blocking. Okay. Yeah. So now um, I get a note from somebody. His name is Beamer. Alan. Mm -hmm. Alan. And Alan says, what am I missing here? And it takes me a minute. But I'm like... Oh, Alan can't see the quote tweet because Dean's blocked him. So he's wondering what the hell I'm talking about. So I say Dean blocks a lot of people on Twitter posting a shirt that someone that he has blocked may be interested that may be interested in buying it, but can't see it is the issue here. Get it? And he goes, Well, darn, I'm in that market. And I I'm in, I need a new shirt. I guess I can't see it, so I won't be able to buy it. Yeah, that's fine. We and then really I make it for people to buy it. Sorry, continue. I know. I know you didn't. And he goes, and then I said, I asked him just to verify because I'm pretty certain I already know the answer. I go, Dean has blocked you, hasn't he? And he goes, yes. Turns out he doesn't take kindly to listener feedback. <laughs> I had someone tell me one time that you had, uh, that you had blocked him. Yeah. And uh, and I said to him, I said, well, what did you say? Like, w was there anything specific? And this woman had made a comment about your hair. Oh, did she? I don't know. Dude, see, here's the thing. This Can I tell you where, you, why we made these shirts? Because Lachlan wanted to, because he gets like 10 emails a day from people saying, hey, can you get him to unblock me? Um, And I might, I might not. I don't know. You're a little trigger happy with the block no, button. No, you no. are. See, yes, you I are. employ. No, hang on. Yeah, Maybe according to you, uh, I run everything through one filter, and that's and 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 your buddy nailed it when he's like, I was just giving him listener feedback. I don't care about your feedback. <laughs> I don't want it. It's unimportant to me. I'm not here for your feedback. I'm not here to make anybody happy. I'm not here to. For their approval of anything I tweet, any T-shirt I make, any content we do, any podcast I record, I'm okay with that. I am not here for any of those things. So when someone tells me, like that vegan lady screaming at the dude eating a kebab, that you have a little dick, that you have small dick energy because you've made a decision that I don't like, and I don't know those people, I still don't care. Doesn't Can matter I to me. None Can of those people you... matter to me. And, and let me just take it a step further. A little piece of advice before we get into Bridges collapsing and P. Diddy on the run and the deep state and Justin Bieber and all the weirdness that's going on over the past 24 hours. If everybody else lived like that, we would have no problems in the world. Not one. If you stopped giving a shit, you'd have 100% more about what other people think about what you're doing or yeah. what you're saying. Or I'm if someone's like, you don't take criticism well. Why would I take criticism from Johnny six nine nine on Twitter, who's got Freedom Thinker in his bio? What advice can I possibly glean from some anonymous Twitter account That's where about the wrong. intentionality of my life? You can think I'm wrong all, all you want, but I'm not. I'm 100 percent right. Let, Every evolutionary let, psychologist will tell you that. Continue. Go ahead. Yeah, because they all read too much, and stoicism is actually Smart. a way of of putting up boundaries. No, it's and not blocking it's your own, blo blocking your it's it's a way of not dealing with the rest of the world. 
It no, is. No, I it, deal. It I deal with it all the time. I choose when I deal with it if it's important to me. But I don't care about any of those people, dude. I am a free man. I am mentally free I, from everybody you know what? else's input into my life. It is. I fucking applaud awesome. you, but. What you are doing is you're disregarding the potential damage you're doing to your listeners, your viewers. By what? Blocking them or yeah. not? Oh, well, I don't care about that. If 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 I'm well, damaging someone by hitting a button that doesn't let them see what, what I'm do. writing, here, and then they're weaker than than anybody that should be looking at my content, and I'm doing them a favor. There's elements of what you're saying that I think are are good, and I think that they could be employed by others to make their lives better. So I'm not going to disregard completely what you're saying, but I will say this. <laughs> you are, but hold on, hold on. Because Dude, I those do, people I do to me are just you. long pork. That's all they are. Long I pork. I just, I applaud you for your efforts just on the block pork. button, right? Thanks, and I, I do it, you. but this is what I do. And, and again, this is just taking it one step further because quite often, and I think you come under this, this happens to you. You're a busy guy, and I don't know if you pay as close attention to things as you as you should sometimes. I'm guilty of this, so I this is the strategy I've employed before I block, because I used to have this no-block policy, and then COVID hit, the world got weird, everyone started fighting, and I wanted to remove myself from a lot of the conversations that I was having online, so I started to block a little bit more freely. And still, for a long time, felt guilty about it. You have helped me not feel guilty about it to a point. Why would you feel guilty but about this is... preventing an asshole from interacting with you? Do you feel guilty about locking your front door so people don't just walk in and help themselves to your shit? Uh, that's... Uh, I don't. I just... I feel like this is... Like, we've, we've chosen this path. We're in the public eye. And that, and that no. we should be accessible. No. That's my, hey, listen, you're not going to change the, my mind. I know I won't because I feel, that's like 50 years of radio telling you that you need to be accessible and you're a public figure and you got it. No, none of that stuff applies anymore. Times change, different change. You need to, you need know, to shut as and, many and, people out of I'm, your life as possible that feed negativity into it. That's what you have to do. You're welcome. Okay. okay hold on. That's my right. point. Let me get back to it. Okay. So now this is what I do. I will sometimes respond to, to what I may deem as a negative tweet or interaction online. Yeah. And I'll see if I got the tone wrong. Because sometimes I get the tone wrong. Sometimes these people think they're funny, mm -hmm. right? And they're maybe not very good at it. And then if, if they come back at me and the exchange is they're apologizing for attempting to be funny and maybe me misunderstanding it, do, do you know yeah, what I'm totally. saying? Sometimes you misread how something's written and you take it as a, as an insult and it's not at all. And then you reply and yeah, dude, it's, it's all the same. And, you, and if the guy, if the guy's a dick yeah. back or she's a bitch back up block away, we go. And then I yeah. can move on. Um, and I don't, I try not to feel guilty about those. I don't feel guilty about any of them. You, you get any comment that you don't like and you block. No, them. that's not true. If I get, I'll tell okay. you, the, you want to give me, I'll give you my blocking metrics. Are you ready for this? Dean's blocking metrics. Ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome. I'm going to give you freedom on social media right now in less than two minutes. Swear to God. I block anonymous accounts with less than 2,000 followers. Actually, it's 5,000. That's my number. Because if I'm going to interact with any, any value account of more than 5,000 people, there might be something in it for me in terms of clicks, in terms of analytics. So that's the only people I reply to. And if it's negative, and you have less than those amount of people, and I don't know who you are, and all you do is tweet reply, and if your feed is just full of hatred for anything, any side, right, left, don't doesn't matter, you just get blocked. Because I don't care. Like, I legitimately don't care. I've got metrics that I feed everything through. But here's the thing. When I say I don't care, like, I mean it. Do you, th do you think you've made some mistakes, though, in your blocking Absolutely not. decisions? No. no, I haven't at all. That's like me saying, <laughs> do you think you made decorating mistakes in your house? No, because it's your house and it's your preference. Like, and why? And again, I, I okay. let me liken it like this, right? Social media DMs, we treat them like they're super private homes, right? Privacy is a big thing in this space. So you have every right with the privacy of what you own to shut out or bring in anybody or anything you want.
as a human being. I don't care what you do with your life. You can do whatever you can have. You can have satanic orgies in your house. If that's what you like to do. Good for you. Just don't be sharing it with me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want you bringing it into my house, my social media account, my email, my DMS, they're mine. They're my accounts. It's like my house. That's fair. So if someone wants to come into my house and take a big steaming dump in the foyer, I'm going to prevent them from coming in my house anymore, right? Because it's it's not why I'm here. I'm not here to have little microaggressive arguments with people I don't know that hide behind accounts and won't give me their name. It's not important to me. It, it matters not. And they don't know me, right? And generally speaking, here's the science, 76% of people on social media that are feeding that shit into your account or interacting with you negatively are bots or trolls. They are not real. So there's even less of a point of interacting Trust me, with these I'm talks. pretty sure a bot wouldn't send me oh, that a was four real. page I letter. 24. 24% is <laughs> real. That guy's real. <laughs> Speaking of real, we need to get to some news. Did you see the. Okay, I do, what? Hold on. Let me just sign okay. off with this. Right. Okay. Because uh, when you're wrong, I need to make sure that I highlight it. What, what about blocking people? I think you have made, I think you've made a couple, maybe not a lot. You've made a couple of quick decisions on the blocking and you have upset people in your life. And I, and listen, I, I know okay. you don't care and I, and, and I know that you're okay with it and you're going to sleep fine tonight. I'm like just telling baby. you right now. I'll sleep like a baby this evening. That, I know, I know you will. I'll be wrapped up in the, in the bed. I'll have one hand on the left. I'll get one hand. Back. I'm going to fall asleep inside you will three sleep minutes. sleep well. And I appreciate your strategy online, and I have actually adapted elements of it in my own life. And I thank You're you welcome. for it because previous to that, I was getting a lot of hate online because I didn't, I chose not to block people. So since I've met you, I've decided what to a block much better people, life. And my life online yeah. is better. But I think that I think you have made a handful of mistakes, and I think those people. If you want me to send you the link to the yeah. shirt, I can do that because you're not going to get it you from go. Dean. And you should buy that shirt to let Dean know just how much you have hurt them. <laughs> At Lachlan Cross on Twitter. If I've blocked you, follow yep. Lachlan. Follow him today. He'll send yep. you the link. I'll follow you. Can, I'll follow you. Until they annoy you. And then you'll be like, fuck, Dean was right. I'm, block. I'm more annoying than everybody else online. <laughs> so that's a high metric. Okay, can we move on to right. P. Diddy and the bridge collapse? Because yes. something happened in Baltimore yesterday. Something happened in the United States yesterday. We have no real Canadian news to speak of, but we do have a Canadian and a British royal attachment to the P. Diddy news. And before we get to that, did you see the bridge, video of the, bridge? the bridge collapse? Did we have video? Fucking Baltimore yesterday? It's happened last Holy night. Shit. That's the Francis Key, Scott Key Bridge. Of course, uh, named after the dude that invented the Star Spangled Banner, wrote the Star Spangled Banner, and uh, one of America's finest writers. And uh, this bridge was a massive commuter bridge that spanned two sides of a major river that ran, runs right through Baltimore. And uh, a shipping container, Chinese Should shipping container. Gone down? Ship. Should that have gone down that I easy? I don't know, dude. Look at the size of the fucking ship runs into a yeah. stanchion or a column of the bridge and the video of its collapse is fucking bananas. They don't know how many people are in the water. Uh, thoughts and prayers, obviously, with whoever's involved in this. Seven people are missing. Only seven? Is was the they last said? I had heard. Yeah, yeah. They did catch. They they pulled a couple of people out. A um, couple of people were like um, one. Well, one guy I heard was in fine condition and then another one was not and was rushed to hospital. Um, and then the the last I heard, but that was in the morning when I was making mm -hmm. coffee, was that it was seven seven people mm, missing. That which is incredible when you see how big that bridge was, and you see some of the video. I'm going to play it for you here. This is the moment of impact where the bridge comes down. It's a Chinese shipping container Something vessel. To do with by the way, going on yeah, yeah. Well, you can see the, all kinds of like explosions thing. on the boat too. Is wild. Uh, Chinese shipping container vessel. M make all the jokes you like. I won't be making those here. Here we go. Let's have a watch. Look at that. Boom. Wow. Wow. It just looks like it's going down too easy. Yeah, it, it looks Is like it a just model, me? doesn't it? It looks like a miniature model. It doesn't look like it's real. Am I the only one that thinks that? That that went down too easy? No. 
Uh, th that's the question NTSB okay. is asking this morning. Uh, U.S. Coast Guard, Department of Homeland Security is that was involved my in this. First yeah. thought when I s saw that when I got up this morning was like that went down way too. I know it's a big yeah. ship, but you'd think that they would make them in such a way to to stand um, that. You know, well, and and if you watch yeah. the video too, and they, I was I was doing some you know reading. You can call it research. I call it research just to sound smart. But I was doing some reading on the thing, and they're like. The bridge wasn't like there's no the boat is not going to go through there ever. Not that size of boat. And it ran right smack dab into the column. And as someone with their pilot's license, I can I can drive boats. I can pilot pretty much any boat. That is like when you watch that, you're, you're like, dude, wasn't paying attention to any buoys, any markers, any bifurcation markers. You didn't see where he's going. Like, like that is that's on autopilot. Something that's on autopilot to the point. Like those boats do, are not piloted by humans unless they're in those situations. So that to me, it, everyone on board was dead or it was intentional. If you know anything about boating. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Like that's wow. impossible. Okay. So, I, how they would run that into a bridge that, but yeah, really? like that far off course, uh, doing that kind of damage. Apparently, everyone on board is fine, but it it is really like like markers. Something and, and, was and going naval on. Navigation are so so clear that that kind of shit never happens for a reason. That's why we're all shocked that it's happening. I'm surprised it doesn't happen yeah. more. To be honest, yeah, right. We don't need to get into that, but. There was something, and, and this is something I saw in the news this morning. They have video of the boat right before it hit that that yeah. column, Dean, and the lights on the boat were going off, then coming on, then going off. Like the video that I saw showed that happening like three or four times. So there might have been some kind of an electrical issue. That's on the boat. A, that's emergency, right? That's a boat that's like... Maybe is an that emergency, what it is? a May Day or some kind of a, yeah, that's exactly what that is. Okay. All right. Yeah, they know that I did, I was just I just yeah. saw a quick story about that. They know anyway. that they can't turn that boat fast enough, can't slow it down fast enough. And and I'm surprised because I don't know how fast it was going, it wasn't going that fast. But those columns and those bridges are supposed to be able to take that kind of beating, right? And so who knows? Maybe it's that was yeah. my point. That's why I find it odd that anyway. that boat was even there. Anyway. Thoughts and prayers. The funny part of that whole thing is that because of what happened with P. Diddy yesterday, there's this conspiracy going around that the deep state took that boat over, rammed it into the fucking bridge so that they would have a mass casualty event so that people would not pay attention to the biggest story in the world, which was yesterday Puff Daddy's homes while we were broadcasting, right? While we're podcasting, yeah. all of Puff Daddy's homes in the United States, New York, LA, Miami, uh, were being raided by the Department of Homeland Security. Now, is he P Diddy or is he um, Puff um, Daddy? What depends name? on where you're addressing him. In prison, it's probably Puffy. <laughs> on the street, it's probably Diddy. Uh, but here's what we know. Uh, yesterday, his home was raided. We're going to get to some of the video in just a second. Uh, raided his homes. Arrested all his kids. He slipped out the back door, hopped a private jet in Van Nuys, took off for Antigua, Barbuda. Uh, little, How many kids? Little play. He's got like 20 of them. I think. I don't know. Who knows? He's got, got 20 kids? kids? Yeah, he's like a basketball player. Dude, he's being arrested and raided for sex trafficking, sex assault, drug trafficking, weapons trafficking. And this is follows a lawsuit by a dude named Lil Rod who said, hey, dude, Lil Rod, he's one of his producers. It's like, hey, dude, um, to the police, he, this guy owes me 30 million. Here's a bunch of videos. We actually have a, a, a news story with those videos up at Cryer Media. You can go and look at it now um, of him being at parties, him being with underage girls, him being trafficked to other men, other producers. This producer was trafficked by Diddy to other men if, for some kind of. In some kind of weird gay sex ring. Apparently, a lot of the young men and young women in question um, get off buses from time to time. His his neighbor, P. Diddy's neighbor in L.A. has come out and gone, yo, you got to check this out. We'll play some of those videos in just a second, but he's on the run. Apparently, his golf stream left Van Nuys, went to Barbuda. Now it's at Cape Verde. Cape Verde does not have an uh, extradition treaty. Uh, the videos of his house being raided by FBI, CIA, Homeland Security are all over the place. You can check out his flight path. Go to Cryer Media. That's a crazy Dude, story. Dude, it's, it's unbelievable. Here's what we know. 
Yeah. Hundreds of uh, Homeland Security agents don't descend on your property's lock on a nationwide search arrest warrant on a hunch. Like they got something. And and I mean, they got a lot mm-hmm. of something. It's got to be irrefutable evidence. Antigua, Barbuda, they have an extradition treaty. Cape Verde, which is very close in the Bahamian Islands, does not believe that's where he is. Um, this goes back to hundreds of allegations that have been made uh, against Puffy on trafficking minors. Uh, several associates said he was involved in the Tupac and Biggie death. A bunch of people around him have died, including his ex-wife recently, who died of pneumonia. Um, and he bailed on his family in L.A. yesterday, including his kids when the raid started. So he knew it was happening. He's fucking guilty as fuck. There's the there's the uh, police showing up to his house in New York. There are the cops showing up in Miami. Wow. And of course, the videos. And let's get to those um, of Diddy legitimately um, <laughs> having his home raided. I mean, you know, that's the videos are real. Right. Like the Epstein stuff. We didn't see any of these videos because he's white. (laughs) Seriously. P. Diddy's black. So he's going to get treated way different. And and this isn't about racism. I'm just saying this is about two very, very, very different sets of circumstances and two very different people. Um, And it's weird because when I started watching the videos of his raids, I'm like, oh, this is like this is real. Like this isn't this isn't a little bit. This is a lot. This is his neighbor after the raid in L.A. You got to watch this video. And I don't know who the dude is. It's probably somebody. Talking about how many busloads of young men and young women get piped into his place in L.A. at 3 o'clock in the morning. Fucking Jesus. crazy. Watch this. Yo, stop bringing all the miners over here late at night. I live right next to him. He do too much. Like, like, like buses, like big ass buses. You can see all type of shit hop out. Especially at nighttime, like around three o'clock in the morning. Ain't it gets wild. I'm his neighbor. Huh. Yeah. That's his neighbor. And you his know neighbor's what? like, I, dude, I, I see a I, lot of shit. He brings over miners here all the time. Now nobody is afraid of the dude because everybody knows. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and you, a, a nice setup, actually, um, afraid. I've never vocalized this. I've never said out loud. I, I always took credit for my uh, my theories on Ellen because for years I was saying something's wrong with that person. I don't trust her. Um, and everyone thought I was crazy. And then when it came out that she was actually like not a very good person, I was like, I felt vindicated. Um, so I never vocalized this, but I've been listening to podcasts now for, for yeah. years and, and, and for whatever reason, P Diddy would come up and it doesn't matter who or when, or, but there was always, and this, I was reminded of it this morning when I was looking at this news, when I, when I saw this news yesterday and this morning, and I was like scrolling through this stuff, every time anybody on a podcast brought up puff daddy or p diddy or whatever his name is it's- there was always this moment of like hesitation about how they talked about him do you know what i'm oh, talking about dude like, and, and i'm across the board there was and and it it always seemed a little bit cat odd. williams and and i even remember dave chappelle uh d row do you know how many people shack do you know how many people have made those like sly references on podcasts or in interviews about yes. him where they're like, dude, I'm not talking. Enough. 50 Cent for the last 20 years has been going, that guy's bad. But I always thought that was a few No, thing. no, no, no. I always thought that but was a they few They never thing. went into detail because he killed Tupac and they were Biggie scared of and them. fucking everybody else. And he was super powerful to the point where Kanye, everybody knows Kanye is insane. Kanye last year was like, that guy's going to get busted for sex trafficking and all the Epstein shit. And everybody's like, you crazy. He's like, no, I'm telling you the truth. And it's like literally happening. And Kanye mm-hmm. yesterday was like, I told you, he's a fed. He works with the feds. He's been allowed to do this. He's been allowed to compromise people because he gets to compromise certain people in certain industries. And apparently the feds, this is one of the running rumors. The feds are done with them. So whoop, time to go. 
that's one huh. of the conspiracy rumors. But yeah, everybody to your I, point has been I, talking about this in in circular fashion for like fucking twenty years. Yes, yes, and and again, it never like it's never something that anybody vocalized. It just when I saw the news, I was like reminded of all of these times that he's come up in conversation on these podcasts that I'm just sitting there listening to. And there's always a moment where there's just this hesitation about going any further. I do remember somebody saying, and I think it was Tom Segura as I listened to uh, two bears, two bears one, cave, one great cave. podcast. Yeah. That, yeah. They're great. I, I love Bert. I, I I'm a big Bert fan. Anyway, Tom, I think said there's gangsters but then there's real gangsters or something like that. I, I don't want to misquote it, but I remember him saying that P Diddy is a real gangster. Mm -hmm. like, and, and, and that was the closest thing I remember hearing to anybody saying uh, other than the, but again, the Kanye stuff, I remember hearing the Kanye stuff, but no yeah, one, God, you, that's the insane. problem. Kanye's nuts. <laughs> that's a problem folks. When you're crazy and you do stuff like that, when you tell the truth, everybody's like, you crazy. No one believes you. Well, even the 50 cent stuff, yeah. right, was was hard to because again, they just it was like, hated maybe each that's other. just but a But Fiddy never came out and said yeah. the stuff. He would just make reference to the stuff, to your point. Like everybody else would make reference to the stuff. But the these yes. these are not references. And we're gonna get so, a little you know deeper. what I did I'm not gonna show you the video. This is the only video that exists of him since the raids. Apparently, this is him yesterday waiting to get on a flight in Miami to go to Cape okay. Verde, apparently. Those, I don't know that this is him. And he's going through some things in this video. I want you to watch carefully. Someone snapped him outside a restaurant in Miami. And dude is pacing back and forth. Here you go. There's Dids. First video. I guess you wonder what's going to happen next, Diddy. <laughs> And then <laughs> guy's just chirping him. Like that's not a dude that's not going through it, right? Walking back and forth, concerned. Yeah, that's that's a guy that's thinking about. Yeah, next that's steps, a guy that's like, right? what do I do? Do I just uh, put a bullet in my head? Do I yeah. just jump off a fucking bridge? Do I take that plane and put it into the ocean? Like what? And that's the thing. How much how much validity do you give the the connection to the 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 feds and I I don't know I mean that's the thing like and I have this going you, through my when you head. open up that yeah. can when you open up that can know, of worms I know. <laughs> well, and I said but, but nothing's crazy anymore right like the Epstein stuff proved that that shit exists and then we're seeing how much it mm. exists in real time and I don't know man I don't know I you know I I, I feel the same way about Elon little bit right where you know the american government has certain people that have the ability to do things go places talk to people they don't and so you watch guys like elon i'm like no one does the things he's doing to 44 billion dollars i'm like what's the end game well he took money out of saudi arabia he's super close with china and russia and i start doing these things in my head about puff daddy i'm like hmm He's friends with a lot of questionable people. He basically can my go anywhere he wants in the world, unfettered with a passport. Nobody questions him. Hmm. Might be. I don't know, but I'm not one of those guys that feeds into conspiracy theories. It's just kind of a fucking cool little wrinkle, if you ask me. I totally will feed into a good conspiracy theory yeah, just for shits and giggles. Okay, so here's my problem with the Elon yeah. Musk thing. Is it every once in a while, there's these people that come along, and for whatever reason, people don't like them. And so they spend all of their waking energy trying to discredit them. And listen, he's not a very likable guy. I am not an Elon Musk fan. I'm not an Elon Musk bro. I don't understand the level of hatred for that man based on what he's accomplished. Uh, there are people out there that spend their entire day researching and creating videos to discredit a man who has accomplished quite a bit. Take his weirdness out of it. <laughs> he has accomplished quite yeah, a bit. He's, Whether he's, he's smart or not, re-engineered space flight for humanity. <laughs> he he he's the only guy to ever start mass producing electric vehicles. 
right? I get it. Yeah. yeah. He's he's apparently implanted that neural link into hate- some guy's head who can play chess now. Ooh, big deal. Um Okay, but hold on, but hold on. That 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 neural link thing is an excellent example. Okay. So when we talked about that last week, I had about six people send me videos that guys are doing in their basements, like hours, hours and hours of time to discredit that oh, video. Totally. Totally. And and now and they're like, and they're like, listen, Locke, do your research. Yeah. This Neuralink thing is not real. And I'm like, okay. Maybe it is. I don't even care if it is. But my point is, he's one of those guys like P. Diddy who really yeah. sits above the law when it comes to being able to get around and go places, right? That's why they're paid to be messengers in some cases. They come back to the United States. They download information. Canada has a group of business elite who do this, dude. Like, I'm not I'm not kidding you. Every country I'm does. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying it's not happening. It, it, oh, it's I'm, ha- not I'm not saying, saying it's not happening either. I'm saying it happens. I, it, you but understand? that's an interesting wrinkle that came from Kanye. And you can't believe Kanye when it comes to anything. But he was right about this. And he's like, I know for a fact he's a Fed. I'm like, oh, my God, this guy's been right like for the last 10 years. <laughs> Is that so the guy was we the bl- InfoWars guy. He was right every <laughs> once in a while, too. Does that mean, like, are we going down I don't that know, path? man. I don't that's know. all I'm saying. I don't know. Is this, we've to. taken a fork in the yeah. road here. That that's we're 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 negotiating some interesting we territory. Are. Do you are you sure you I'm want not. To? I just I'm I'm introducing okay. it as hey, listen, at some point we might have to other go other people down, are talking. Yeah, about we might it. have to go down that road. Canadian connection. So China yeah. took out the bridge. Poor Puffy. And P. Diddy was working for the government <laughs> in the United States of America. Yeah, that's what's going on. Dude, that is like a real narrative out there. I don't believe in any of that shit. At all, I think he's getting busted I for sex trafficking, and I think a Chinese shipping container went off course. Real... I don't think they're related, but you know what is interesting is the Justin Bieber. I think shit, you believe the in Justin this Justin Bieber shit that's coming out of uh, the P Diddy stuff. Okay, I, I didn't know anything about this. I had no idea that there was a Justin Bieber and a. I knew there was an Usher connection. I didn't know there was a P Diddy or Puff Daddy connection between uh, yeah. Justin. So is Bieber is Bieber hiding right now? No, like, I, no, no, like, no. He's does he make videos a statement? of him connecting with with uh, P Diddy when he was fifteen. Specifically, this video that I'm going to play you, fascinating. I haven't I haven't seen this. this. Is a fifteen year old Justin Bieber. This is shortly after he kind of popped, yeah, right? Fifteen year old Justin Bieber baby, with Puff baby. Daddy, uh, at a secret location doing secret things for 48 hours that every 15 year what are you showing that every 15 year old boy dreams of doing these are the kind of videos that people are starting to go oh uh what happened to justin bieber because justin bieber at this point in time went from being the property of usher to being the to having puff daddy be his legal guardian puff daddy what? for a time was Justin Bieber's legal guardian. Let's go to the video. Yeah, I didn't I had no Justin, idea. Justin, he's in you ever seen the movie Forty Eight Hours? Right now he's having forty eight hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um they're having the times of their lives, like 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 the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um we we can't really disclose. But um it's definitely a fifteen year old's dream. Um you know I I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed to Usher. I'm signed to Usher. Uh, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and yeah, and, and we gonna go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. Hmm. 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 Fascinating, isn't it? Like, uh, we've heard the stories for years. We've laughed at the rumors and almost like when Trump goes, Russia, 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 which is true, by the way, all of it's true. It sounds like it sounds like that was the we're all crazy. I had no idea that there was a Bieber pity P. Diddy. I had none. I 
I've never seen that video. I've never. And heard then, of like it. for I'm a time, for a time there, world. Bieber goes nuts, right? In his teen years, early twenties, cleans it up. Says he had a terrible time with fame and everything that came with fame. Turns his life over to Jesus at like 21, 22, whatever it is, and like stays away from those still guys. Still pretty religious. Yeah, he is, stays away from those guys. I thought it was an A, but thing. has not. I, dude I, has not interacted and has made a point since then of not interacting with Puff Daddy for some reason. So it's going to be incredibly interesting because of the size and the scope and the legitimacy of this investigation to see what comes out. Prince Harry's name was actually in one of the documents as well. Did you hear about that? Prince yeah. Harry and P. Diddy? Yeah, but not, okay. not like you All think. Right. This is, Let's make it well, weirder. I'm going to make it weirder. This is a news <laughs> report out of, out of England. Um, and the $30 million lawsuit, sex trafficking, rape, money laundering, lawsuit that was dropped yesterday by Lil Rod, which is, was Cohen, Cohen, it was, it was in uh, conjunction. That was the word I'm looking for with this investigation in that paper. Bieber's so name comes on, out. Hang up. on. Prince Harry's name comes trouble. out. Go ahead. Yeah. Who's the guy that the, the lawsuit Rod. here? Who's Little this Rod. guy? Who's Little, Little Rod? Rod is what the producer hell's... who was brought into the P Diddy fold years ago to produce. And during that time, okay. There's a whole article. This is what started it. This young lady named Cassie filed the first rape uh, allegation. And then this little Rod heard about it. He's like, I saw it all. I saw it all. And not only that, I was trafficked to other men as a teenager and a young 20-year-old. And with the promise of all this money in being a super producer and winning Grammy, uh, Puff Daddy tried to pass me off to this other producer who's a male. And I refused to sleep with him. And I got fired. So therefore, $30 million lawsuit. Where... Prince Harry comes in, is his name's in the actual lawsuit, which is fascinating. Let's watch this report. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to piece all this together. Yeah, no problem. Prince Harry, uh, he's been named in a bombshell $30 million lawsuit against the rapper Sean Coombs, Diddy Coombs. Uh, the producer suing the rapper in the United States, this is over sex trafficking, uh, trafficking parties, I should uh, say very, very quickly that there is absolutely no suggestion whatsoever that the Duke of Sussex attended any of these parties. But uh, the producer suing uh, Sean Diddy Coombs says the rapper's access to the Duke of Sussex and other celebrities boosted his legitimacy. This is a record producer called Rodney Lil Rod Jones. He has filed the lawsuit against Diddy and claims that his affiliation to the Duke of Sussex and other stars gives him and his associates legitimacy. And guests were apparently drawn, according to Lil Rod's lawsuit, <laughs> to Diddy's alleged sex trafficking parties because of his access to celebrities, such as famous athletes, political figures, artists, musicians, and international mm. dig dignitaries like the British royal Prince Harry. Court documents that have just been nuts. filed in a New York court say if there is any uh, update on this. Of course, we will bring it to you throughout the programme. Um, this is a, a slightly strange one, Sophia, but what's your reaction? Well, I think it's one of these things where the person filing the lawsuit has thought maybe well, I can get a bit of uh, publicity by Throw naming particular celebrities, and now we're talking about it, so it's clearly got the reaction they want. Obviously, it's very... Yeah, there you go. Okay, so... I've heard like the Me Too stuff about Puff Daddy, mm -hmm. right? I, I that that I've heard of. This is a new lawsuit. This thirty million from Little, Little Rod. Rod. Yeah, this he is, filed he filed a claim like two months ago. This is the lawsuit. Yeah. So the lawsuit, and you you're thinking that this lawsuit is what has sparked the raid on all of his properties, and then the unearthing of the the firearms charge, the sex trafficking charges. Yeah. The drug yeah, the, the original rape charge. I mean, there's been smoke there for years, right? And we don't know yes, what they have. Yeah. We don't know if they've been investigating him this whole time. We have no idea. Um, but child trafficking has never come up, or am I wrong? Once. Rape has come up, drug About running, money laundering has come up, yeah. all that other shit, being a gang, murder for hire yeah. plots, that's all come up. Sex trafficking is the first one. But that seems to be the the point Tupac of the entire thing. investigation. Yeah, Tupac and Biggie and Kim Porter, his ex-wife, yeah, and a couple of other people along the way. And then, of course, there was that that fight that he got into with Drake a couple of years where he beat the shit out of Drake at a, at a backyard party. And Drake went in. He was in hiding for like six months. So, And there's rumors that Drake... There's rumors that Drake is somehow... Somehow, this? I don't know is, how. I don't is, it, like. Maybe okay. it's like Prince Harry. Is he in the? Is he in the lawsuit? I don't know. I haven't read the whole lawsuit. I have not the seen it. I have not seen his name in it. 
but it's one of the rumors on social media. It's like uh, Drake's next. That's one of the things I read. And I'm like, what is this Drake's next thing? Like, is he next in terms of what's going on? Is he next in terms of, uh, so it's going to be fascinating to see what happens. I don't know. And, and I listen, it's not an allegation. I'm not, I'm not saying that Drake does these things or he's involved in these things. No, he knows all of these people. And there are those rumors out there with this as well. Yes. Whether it's true or his not. name, like it's the same thing with Justin Bieber. It's the same thing with Prince Harry. Yeah, I'd be, like this yeah. is out now and people are talking mm-hmm. about it. I did see the Drake stuff as well mm-hmm. online. Right. And there's no, that not, nothing is in the lawsuit about mm-hmm. Drake. Uh, but you know what, as far as being a good guy, bad guy, whatever you are the one I, I don't know Drake from a hole in the ground, but if you talk to anybody who spent any length of time in Toronto, on the on on the media side like you did you don't find too many people that go that drake guy what a good guy gives back to the there's none of that not a single person right no no everybody is kind of like just not a good no, guy can't right? stand him. Like, uh he is it's it's like anything right it's like the royals are vilified in england drake is like hated in this city hated i mean you know younger people that don't know him and think he's just a just a rap guy from Toronto doing his best. It's not true. He's he's his in in New York. Like I remember when Trump won the 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 uh, the presidency, and then it started to come out like people were like, "How did this happen?" And New Yorkers were like, "We've hated this man forever. He's a criminal. He doesn't pay his bills. He's a shyster. We've known like remember uh, what's his nuts the actor." Niro, Robert yeah, De Niro, yeah. how mad he is every time they put a camera on him about Trump. <laughs> he snapped. Yeah, he's a New Yorker, yeah, right? He's, like he, he, everybody in your hometown knows what kind of a douchebag you are. You might be liked around the world, but nobody knows you around the world. We all know his shit. Like I know bookers and promoters who won't book any Drake shows with any of his artists or anybody associated with him for a bunch of reasons. And yeah. I don't want to get into those reasons, but you can imagine what those reasons are. And so I am felt like the the Diddy stuff. You kind of knew it was coming specifically last three months. I am fascinated at the cult possible collateral damage and some of the people that might get caught up in this and some of the rumors that we've heard that are similar with other people that he's attached to associated with that are also in that industry that have broken bread with him that have party with him, hung out with him, done business with him. Drake's one of those guys. So we'll see. I, he might be clean as a whistle. I don't know. No idea. You know what's just you rumors. know what's interesting about the times that we're we're living in. Sorry, just what rumors. did you say? They're just Drake rumors, right? Now. Yeah, just rumors. Um, it what's interesting with respect to the times that we're living in right now, Dean, is and correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. Listen, there always has been corruption and and power and money and influence has a way of especially if you have loose morals to begin with has a way of of getting in the way of doing the right thing a lot of times, yeah. right? And that's this is not a new yeah. thing, right? Um, power does quite often corrupt. And I don't think it corrupts everybody, but it 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 can, right? And 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 I think it's just becoming harder and harder to get away with these things now than it was back in the day. Is oh, that safe to say? Totally, dude. I had this conversation with someone yesterday. They're like all these rumors, like we've we've heard about these kinds of people and things and yes. groups and sex trafficking and drugs and elites for years. Why are we only seeing the truth about some of it now? And I'm like, you can hate social media and the internet all you like. It's the only reason. But but it works. <laughs> Dude, anybody can say anything. And if you're somebody and you make an allegation and you're not scared, that allegation is huge, right? People were not they didn't have an avenue to do that before. They had no way of getting yeah. information out. You had to like go to a newspaper, take out an ad, hope that someone interviewed you, hope that you maybe got interviewed by a television station, hope that maybe someone came along yeah. and championed your story. Hope, 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 hope. You don't need that anymore. People can just go, hey, uh, Sean Diddy Combs is sex traffic's minors. And here's the receipt. And all of a sudden, the Department of Homeland Security goes, oh, we're interested. <laughs> right? So- that's why mm-hmm. we live in this space. And it's and it's awesome. Like, you know, a lot of people get angry about the social media thing, the blocking, the algorithm. The, oh, it's changed our society. It's made us angry. It's turned us into robots. Largely true. But it's also given us transparency like we have never had before. So I kind of dig it. 
although there there is a there, there's a downfall to that because quite often I think the the waters are muddied and that's why I'm always you can feel our tentativeness on this podcast about the discussion right like I I, I I'm because I don't know any of this stuff like I like I don't even know what the hell to call him if he's puff or diddy or oh dude I haven't thought about puff diddy. daddy for 20 years. So I'm, I'm so, and so when the names start coming yeah. up and, and you're, you're playing Justin Bieber videos that I've never seen, <laughs> like, oh, really? What, what are oh, we doing dude, here? Right? So because I think what can happen is it, the, the reverse happens. So yes, I get the transparency yeah. thing and I, and, and, and I understand that. And I think there has to be a certain amount of appreciation for the fact that people like pop daddy, Jeffrey Epstein, that it, it comes to roost. Although there are still, I think people with a lot of money influence that buried those stories. I mean, unless of course he hung himself the world's biggest narcissist decided that it was over and that he was just going to end his yeah, life. In New York. <laughs> I, dude, I, I yeah. can't see the size and the scope and the ego and all the things that are involved with Puff Daddy and all the people associated and the collateral damage in entertainment media. Yeah. Uh, I don't see this ending any differently. I got to tell you that. I really don't. I got, well, how does he, how does he get out of this? If any of it is true, how does he continue to? Go, and oh, if it I'm is, resilient, I'm going to make it through my 140 year sentence. No, no. Well, let me just man. finish my point. There's also you have to be careful about this these types of stories as well, because with that transparency also comes with the fact that a lot of people will go out of their way to create disinformation to create stories that aren't there and i think we might be seeing a little bit of that right now by by people pulling pulling other names and other celebrities into this discussion right now like i'm not saying prince harry shouldn't have been mentioned in the lawsuit but the fact that he is ah, yeah, right you know yeah. what i mean oh they're just doing like, it just let's doing it make it extra, let's make this little more, extra pub right that was the whole goal and it works let's give yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's give it a little bit more pop. Let's put a royal on it, right? And I'm not saying <laughs> Prince Harry isn't guilty. I'm saying that... Uh, largely, apparently, the document says he didn't do anything. It's just that he had access to guys like Prince Harry. And that adds the legitimacy of him being allowed to do what he does. So, for yes, sure, Prince Andrew exactly. did some stuff, though. I can guarantee you that. If there's some royal that you want to question, it might be Andy. Andy, where you at? <laughs> I don't want him talking about him. I thought I was through this. Anyway, fucking huge story. Is he still trying to? Didn't they kick yeah, him off? Yeah, he's like riding horses out of a castle or something. It's like riding horses in the country by himself or something like that, crying. <laughs> Wipe him out. We don't need a royal family. What? Sh what? What is your saying about Schadenfreude? Schadenfreude. It's Schadenfreude season. I love it. My yeah, favorite yeah. emotion. When bad things happen to bad people. It's the best. Uh, thanks for doing this today. Uh, let's get to the uh, Arden Roofing Systems locker room retro replay of the day. Lachlan Cross, our friends at Arden Roofing Systems, have been kind enough to sponsor this feature where you look back on years of radio excellence, being one of the most influential radio people in the country for as long as you were. Um, and Arden loved you because you're human. And you also love other human stories like Mad Mike Hughes, correct? Well, I I want to say this. Go to ardentroofsystems.com, okay? And uh, check out the registration for the golf tournament on July 5th. You don't want to miss out on this. Sign up. We just actually had a uh, a sponsor jump on board, and we'll be meeting them sooner than later. Um, the uh, the uh, the tournament is presented by Pioneer Golf Company, which is a Canadian company that uh, deals with golf apparel, and they make it all themselves. So, um, congratulations to Stacy for getting a title sponsor for the golf tournament at the ranch. And again, sign up, get your team, get your you can sign up individually as well. And if you're looking for any information, you can just send me a note too, and I can send you links. But this week, and I mentioned this yesterday when we played advice from Phil, the montage that I was going to introduce you to a bunch of characters that became characters 
on the show because of our ongoing relationship. And one of those guys was Mad Mike Hughes. I'll explain who Mad Mike Hughes is after, although the clips kind of explain it as well, after this little montage. The Lock lock, Retro retro, 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 Play. Hello, it's Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, Mad Mike Hughes. Woo! Well done. Awesome job, buddy. I would like to point out that from day one, I knew you were going to strap your crazy ass to that thing and launch it. I knew it. I had a feeling it was going to happen. I knew it. And a lot of people didn't believe you were going to pull it off. Well, that's the easy thing. You know, a lot of people don't have a belief in anything. Now, how do you feel? Yeah, Yeah, I'm hurting. Okay. (laughs) I'm hurting. I'm telling you right now, I am three times the motorcycle rider and racer Evil Knievel ever was, and three times the daredevil. Did you know Evil Knievel? I met him a couple of times. I was pretty unimpressed. Oh, no, you're always welcome to call me. You guys have been nothing but gentlemen to me. I appreciate it. I would really appreciate it if you gave us a heads up on any anything else you have coming down the pipe. Okay, big guy? Okay, I'll tell you the next time I'm getting ready to jump some girl, okay? Okay. <laughs> that would be that would be a report worth getting on the air, for sure. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Elon Musk saying we're going to colonize Mars by 2025. He's on crack. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> It's tough to leave the house. You know, I've got my cats and, uh, you know, that's my life. You got ca- How many cats have you got? I got four cats. Is All there right. a plan in yeah. place for them? Yeah. Just in case? Just in case. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, good. Um, I got a lot of other things planned. We're going to go to space and I'm planning I'm running for governor. I got one thing to say. What's that? I'm too sexy for this radio show. <laughs> <laughs> we could tell by that video. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Ladies okay. all over you. Uh, yeah, so anyway, Trump, we cannot go back to the moon. We cannot get up any higher, I think, than 400 miles. We can't get to the Van Allen radiation belt. There's, there's more ways to steal money. NASA gets over $50 million a day. Who's go- a day, per day. Here's my theory. I would never join a club that had me as a member. <laughs> <laughs> to common law, which is the real law of this land. All this other stuff is fraud. Well, good luck with that. Well, I wanted to talk yeah. to you. <laughs> In fact, one of the young ladies in that video is a filmmaker. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Should we be talking about this? <laughs> have you yeah, talked to your lawyer? Okay, okay, all right. I don't remember. I don't have a lawyer. I don't believe in them. Okay. <laughs> you might need to. <laughs> uh, October 30th will be the biggest day in common law history. I have Mark Zuckerberg, Kamala Harris, Warren Buffett, and Elon Musk in court. <laughs> Four different courts, same morning. They're not all going to show up. <laughs> I'm going to have them served. Why are you suing all of them? Well, we're just trying to get to the truth of everything and find out who these people really are. What we're going to do is we're ordering a new part today or tomorrow morning. To the O-ring? The uh, no, it's not an O-ring. It's just okay. the actual barrier. It's not strong enough to pull the new four-inch plug out of the rocket nozzle. Oh, okay. Because um, you did say in the key. video that you thought you might have blown an O-ring, which I did back in the late ring. '90s, and it wasn't a pleasant day. Well, <laughs> yeah, I know. I did a couple ex girlfriends too, so it wasn't nice either. So. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> that's a true statement. I'm 61. I got more hair now than I did when I was 20. Yeah, what you taking is that vitamins all? or yeah, what? What is that all about? It's vitamins. I hang upside down two or three times a week. Okay. They say if men walked on their hands instead of their feet, it'd be 50 percent less baldness. I heard the management there thinks I'm nuts. Is that true? No, no. They think we're nuts. That's, that's a rumor. And that just for that little midget guy, he can't come down here. That's not safe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to realize how many people I've traveled with over the years, motorcycle and car racing. I've experienced every body function possible. <laughs> You know, I got enough going on. Jeffrey Epstein, man, I don't even think that guy's dead. But let me ask a bigger question. Is the world ready for Mad Mike Hughes? <laughs> <laughs> True. I don't know if we are. Yeah. Well, I believe and I hope that I make people think. There is a lyric in a Jethro Tull song from, I believe, 1974. I can make you feel, but I can't make you think. And I want to make people do both. Thank you for that. Yep. Your wise men don't know how it feels to be sick as a brick. I'm just trying to make the world a better place, and I'm after the, the raw truth on everything. 
There you go. Mad Mike Hughes, the retro locker room retro replay of the day brought to you by Arden Roof Systems. Go to ArdenRoofSystems.com. Uh, get a quote on a new roof, new eaves, new siding. Also sign up for their golf tournament and sponsor and donate for the uh, Stollery Child Life Program, which is what he yes. puts all of his community effort towards, which is an incredible thing. Uh, Mad Mike Hughes, by the way, just wanted to bring this up, lot in case you uh, died in 2020. Yes, February 2020. We were actually supposed to talk to him that morning um, because what he was famous for, among um, a number of other things. By the way, if you get a time today to to research common law, don't, like go don't, into that. And don't, don't. It's just the don't, post. Don't. It's post it's stuff. What, it's what every hillbilly and every person that doesn't Crazy. like accountability uses as the law. Don't study common law. It's purposeless. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Anyway, I, I looked into it because he kept bringing it up. I had no idea what it was. And then I, I looked into it. And I'm like, oh, OK, here we go. That's because he was suing people for their identities. Like at one point he was taking O.J. Simpson to court. <laughs> but I, what I love about him, I heard about him years ago. And when you brought him up for the retro replay of the day, I'm like, oh, that's the guy who thought the earth was flat as a PR stunt. And he liked to build rockets and he wanted to take his own rocket yes. into space. And in 2020, that's how he died in 2020. He builds this rocket that was supposed to, you know, be launched at like, I don't know, 20,000 feet with a bunch of balloons or something like that. And then the rocket takes off and boom, right into the ground. and he dies. OK, well, first off, he he did launch himself in that damn rocket, which was a steam rocket. Dude. It was a what? Steam it rocket? Powered by steam. <laughs> So, and he had this guy Waldo with him, helping him out. One of his engineers, one of his techs. And I swear to God, Dean, we had, we had him on the air for two years straight. Like once a week, we would do Mad Mike Hughes. And it was so entertaining. Not only that, he was, we were one of the few shows that he would actually talk to. And we would call him from the site like hours before he was supposed to strap his crazy ass into these rockets. So that morning, one of the last clips you hear in that montage, I put that together after he passed because we were actually sad. We, we I, listen, he was crazy, but I loved mad Mike Hughes. He was awesome. You know what? It's funny because he, like he'd, he'd be one of those guys that, that we would vilify on social media from 2020 to 2024 because of his views but back then you're like this guy's out there like he's entertaining he's he's fun he's cool to talk to but he's one of those guys right and he was just like hey this is who i am it's what i want to do and we didn't used to mock people back then into suicide right like <laughs> this guy was like he was he was originally one of those guys you could be able to talk to which is what i found really fascinating about that if you look at it from a timing perspective, that was back in like 2019 right 2018 2019 that you were talking to this guy that was back when you know, if you were doing content and you ran into one of those guys, you're like, I need to know what you think. Now we're like, I the don't want to know what before, you think, which is why I love that interview. So in February, um, I have hours of tape of Mad Mike Hughes. I like we talked to him, like I said, probably 50 to 100 times. The morning that he died in February 2020, I think it was in February 19th that he passed away. He was 64 years of age. We hooked up with him that morning. And then he talked about, and he was, you could tell he was nervous because he was getting on that damn, that damn rocket. Mm -hmm. Right. And some people, there's conspiracy theories about Mad Mike Hughes that he was actually in a lot of money troubles and that that was his sort of way. He knew that he wasn't going to make it. Um, but, but he died in an attempt in that rocket, which he had actually launched a couple of times previous to that. This time though, was the day that he was going up. And that they were going to take pictures and show the world that the, that the earth is flat. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then when we saw it in the news, I was like, oh my God, because we, we were following, there was a TV crew that was following him around too. I'm trying to remember the name of the guy that was, that was following him around doing a documentary on him. And they have footage of, of that, that, and that's what ended up in the news. Oh dude, I've got it here. You want to see it? No, I damn it. I wish I could remember the name. Yes, I do. Yeah, want dude, to see this it. is the this is the last video. This is the launch. And it's actually impressive. And it shows the steam coming out of the back end. But it also shows the parachute flying off it as soon as he launches it. We're 
something happened. Like he went, he he took a little jerky turn right out of the gates, and everyone's saying that 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 like that was the. Well, I, the generally rocket. speaking, I think space flight isn't one of those DIY things. Listen, he had yeah. Waldo. <laughs> he had Waldo. <laughs> I give him credit, though. True story. I give him full credit. Waldo's, by the way, just so you know, if anybody was worried about the cats, Waldo got the oh, cats. Oh, did he? You checked in with everybody after yes, just to make sure. Here's uh, Mad Mike Hughes in the last flight that he took. You can watch it. Fascinating stuff. I'm really glad you brought this guy up on the show for the retro replay of the day brought to you by Art Roof Systems. Go to Art Roof Systems. It fits into the whole conspiracy totally. theory stuff that we've been talking yeah. about today. The deep State yeah. probably. I, and that was an deep accident. Deep State probably did this. Watch it. Here's uh, here's my, Mad Mike Hughes' final flight. Wild. Right there. Parachute came out yeah. and he went sideways. And then here we go. More yeah. mics in there. All that entertainment. All that know how. Kaboom. There you go. Everybody's cheering, which is weird. No, they're oh, screaming. They? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think he had a girlfriend there. At the time <laughs> yeah. Or... Once, uh, uh... There was film crews and stuff. So, and... no movie? We're not going to see a movie. You know what? The guy, damn it. Let me look it I'd up watch it. because he he was an interesting cat, the guy that was filming. I'd watch it. it. He had he had a TV show for years and then ended up like us, ended up making contact with Mad Mike Hughes. And um Mad Mike. I'll do it. we'll do it another time. I'm just trying to remember the name of the guy that was connected to him from the filming stuff. It was he he's in Los Angeles now and he does a lot of stuff with VR. Damn it, I can see I can picture his face, but he was the one that was talking about doing a um a documentary on him. And I still think that w there has to be something done on on Mad Mac Hughes cuz those those waters run really deep. And it, like he was getting kicked out of court all the time because he was doing the common law stuff. Um, and so the judges and the and the and the legal system down in Vegas, mm -hmm. he drove he made money by driving limo. He had a limo service in Vegas. Seriously. Yeah. No way. We tried to hook up with him when we went down for a trip to Vegas as a show, and it didn't it didn't come together. He um he I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he's too crazy. He, he's too crazy. One of, he was yeah, too, he's too crazy to get together. He's one of those guys like I can't. I'm collecting steam tonight for my rocket. Can't do it. What a fascinating man, yeah, dude! I, Unbelievable. The, 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 like just to just to get into outer space, just to be a guy that yeah, I do this on my own, right? Like it doesn't matter how crazy he is. I like the guy. I'm glad you brought it up. Nice to see Mad Mike Hughes, familiar with the story, and had no idea how it ended, and also had no idea that you were buddies with him. So that's fascinating. Yeah, he used to text me. Did he really? Like, uh, like, yeah, yeah. I'd get like I'd be just sitting there having dinner and I get a text and my wife would be who's Mad that Mike from? Hughes. Like it's Mad Mike Hughes. <laughs> He's at the launch site. He's getting ready to take off in a steamer. Yeah, it's crazy man. Uh, it's thanks for doing this. Don't forget everything that you uh, you hear and see from Lachlan Cross, including his partnerships with our friends at Monster Pro Wrestling. Our roofing systems can be found at the Locker Room YouTube page. You can also find everything that Lachlan does on his Twitter feed at Lachlan Cross is where you can find him. Thanks for doing this today. Great to see you, brother. Can we um, tease the show Absolutely. tomorrow? Yeah, big show tomorrow. We, you have an announcement, which we're not going to get to, but we also um, will have David Parker on. Correct. And the announcement is about David Parker from Take Back Alberta. Okay. If you remember a couple All of right. weeks ago, we did an interview and it went viral, uh, became a mass national news story uh, when he went after people in the Conservative Party of Canada, which I'm a big fan of, uh, even though he is involved with those people in that cabal. Dude hates corruption, like hates it. And here's the other thing: I, I actually still find I get it, a kick out of him. I, I still find it very interesting that you Our buddies with him. have a relationship with Take Back Alberta guy. I know David it's Parker. crazy. I'm well, you know what? I'll tell you something. So tomorrow we're going to have an announcement. It's going to have something to do with David Parker being on the show tomorrow, and we're going to talk about a bunch of different stuff. But 
a lot like the conversation we just had about Mad Mike Hughes when people could have a conversation that had diverging opinions or you thought maybe that okay, good. I'm crazy. glad you yeah, said yeah, it. Yeah. It's like, I'm like, dude, I There's should be some... allowed to talk to anybody I want. Like, I want to talk to Jordan Peterson. I just don't, I don't want to just mock him. Right. I want to talk to people yeah. that I have a difference of opinion on. I don't want to sit there and throw bullets at people all the time and say, if you're this way, you represent this culture. Therefore you're a write off. I want to know. So David Parker is going to join us tomorrow. We're going to make an announcement about that kind of stuff tomorrow. And we are going okay, to. Okay, I'll go unblock Yeah, him. you should. Did you block him? <laughs> you know, it's really funny because I like he and I actually get along really well. And we also carve each other for, you know, what each other think that we don't like. But at, at the basis, there's a great relationship around humanity. Believe it or not, he's a very human person. And so part of the deal was he's like, oh, why do you always like should post my tweets. I'm like, well, that'll never stop no matter how close we are. <laughs> no matter how, how close we, he's like, I had to buy to mute you. So the guy we're on the show tomorrow, we're making an announcement. With, Has you muted? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he's a good guy. I mean, Hey, listen, whatever you think he represents, we'll find with, out. You yeah. don't, you don't have to agree no. with people. No, right? you, but you should but at least you, be able to have a conversation I, with people, right? That's the direction I want to take everything that we do. I I would like to point out that I was a proponent of That's this strategy years That's ago. That's true. You're like, I only want to talk to progressives that love Trudeau. That's what you said to me. I will come through the screen. I I swear. By the way, Trudeau's going to lose. Watch. Yes, he is. And and I don't know if that, like, listen. I'm Another not a liberal, day. We're not talking about it today. We're I wouldn't. I would not necessarily label myself as a conservative anymore, but I, listen, I will say this. This is another Lachlan prediction. If PP wins or Jeff, whatever you Jeff. want to call him, let's go Jeff, whatever you want to call the man, I think we're going to have a whole host of other issues. Without question. Politics is a dirty yes. game. They're not in it for you. We'll talk about that another day. Lachlan Cross. Find him on Twitter at Lachlan Thank Cross. Thank you, Great sir. To see you. Brought to you by our friends at Art and Roof Systems, their golf tournament in uh, conjunction with Stollery Children's Life Program. The Child Life Program uh, is available now for you to donate, get your foursome, sponsor a hole. It's a great time to help out these kids who just want to feel like kids that are going through some stuff. Uh, and Art and Roof Systems, which is Edmonton's number one roofing company, uh, is the title sponsor. And they need your help to fill up their golf tournament. Go to ArtandRoofSystems.com for more information. And if you're looking for a roof, you're looking for siding, you're just looking for the best roofer who guarantees all of his work from the first nail to the last shingle to siding to eaves troughs, go to ArtandRoofSystems.com. Get a quote. Tell him we said hi. He'll come to your house and fill your day with smiles. He's that kind of guy. Also brought to you by our friends out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, uh, a national program, Cantork.com. Go to Cantork.com today. Uh, if you're in need of rugged, hardworking torque wrenches, they make the best in the world out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, offering you the very best in sales, service, ca rentals, calibration, maintenance, and custom fabrication. 20 years they've been doing it, unparalleled expertise when it comes to making bolting solutions, loosening and fastening solutions for bolting projects you cannot find one for. They save you time, effort, and hassle on their website. You can check out all their products, services, as well as Colin's new podcast. It's called Talk and Torque. He is a beauty. Just a great guy. Races with the Alex Tagliani Pinty's NASCAR racing team. He is in this business from start to finish. Uh, he's one of the most dedicated, hardworking individuals. They've been at this for 20 years. Engineers, exceptional customer service, industry expertise. Most cases, they've been there and done that, and they want to be there and do that for you. So go to cantork.com for more information. Also brought to you by our friends at Muse Massage Spa. Go to musemassagespa.com for $50 off your session. Get in touch with Emily and Riley. Send them a DM or an email when you contact them at their website or anywhere you find Muse Massage Spa online. And uh, they're going to take you through a discreet experience. If you're concerned and if you've never been to a body rub parlor, this is the best in Canada, by the way. People from around the world come here for this experience. Uh, you can go and join the girls and get $50 off. There you have it. And they've got a podcast called Muse on the Mic. You can get it on Patreon, totally uncensored. You can also get it uh, on YouTube, go and sub to their YouTube channel and make sure you interact with these ladies, sexologists, educators, advocates for the sex work industry, super connected, wonderful people, really, really good girls, Emily and Riley. You're going to love them. So go and interact with everything Muse Massage Spa does at musemassagespa.com. Get your session today, book your treatment and schedule. Uh, and make sure you sub and download on their podcast. You can get it at Patreon again, Muse on the Mic, Patreon, and again, YouTube as well. And we're brought to you by Rome. 
drive on your own with your own terms in a car subscription from Rome. Insurance, routine maintenance, roadside assistance is included. Everything except for fuel. There is no lease or interest payment. Simply pay as you go. Flexible monthly plans starting in one month. You can go 12 months. They've got home delivery and valet available. 4.9 stars on Google. Listen, this is a great business. And the economy of car buying is a pain in the ass. Used cars are hard to find. You want to try an SUV. You want to try an EV, but you're not sure if you're in the market for one. You don't have to be anymore. There's no mitigation of loss. As soon as you drive a new car off the actual lot, you get to choose from any car in their inventory. And here's the great part. You don't have to pay for insurance. You don't have to pay for maintenance. And all your roadside assistance is included in one payment. Everything except for fuel. Browse the car, see how it works, check out the customer testimonials, give them a call, go to Rome.auto and use promo code Rome with Dean. Again, Rome.auto, promo code Rome with Dean, and you'll get $150 off your first month. Listen, I'm a customer. And when I found Rome, I'm like, hey, I love you guys. Started talking to them. And then I realized that they were brand new to the GTA, just in the Toronto area right now. They hope to span across the country. Um, and they saved my life. I'm like, I need a car, can't find one. It's impossible to buy the kind of car I want. I got sticker shop buying a new car. They're like, come on, we'll help you. And not only did they help me, their team put me at ease, delivered a car, handed me the keys, did a walk around and said, have a nice time. All for the exact same payment I would have made on another vehicle and no maintenance and no insurance. Come on, super easy. Rome.auto, Rome with Dean is your promo code, $150 off your first month. Check them out today. Have a great day, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. As always, appreciate your time because we do know that uh, you can get more stuff. You can't get more time. It's a diminishing capacity. So we really appreciate you taking time with us today. Don't forget everything we do is a Cryer Media. YouTube, Dean Blundell Show, Cryer Media on YouTube as well. Uh, and follow us anywhere you get Cryer Media on your socials. Grateful you could spend a couple minutes with us today. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow with David Parker. Big announcement. We'll see you then. Bye.